Hello everyone, I'm from Line Development Center 1, especially responsible for the H base. My name is Tsuruhara. I would like to talk about the behind the scene H base that supports a huge traffic of line. The agenda for today is as follows. First of all, I would like to talk about the H-Base use at LINE, and then talk about the most recent engagement of H-Base upgrade. LINE has a huge traffic and storage and middleware, sometimes needs to go through an upgrade, and we want to share our own challenges, and what type of craftsmanship do we have to overcome those challenges are something I would like to talk about. So, let's talk about HBase at line. Where do we use HBase line at line? We use HBase for many purposes. Our main feature, messaging service behind the scene, HBase is used as a backend service, and also behind line games. HBase is supporting the game platform, and also timeline feature and statistical analysis use HBase as well. In this presentation, I would like to talk about and focus on the um, HBase for messaging service. HBase is operated differently by different divisions and versions, operation methodology. Uh, it's quite different. But uh, for my presentation, I would like to focus on the HBase for messaging service. So how do we use HBase for messaging purpose? What type of data do we have on HBase? Most of the data of line is inside HBase. To be more specific, nickname, display name, device information, social graph, message contents, all inside HBase. And on the talk operation, that means there are so many events happening online, and it's an abstract data, and that's what we call it uh, um, operation. And um, that's also inside HBase. As you can see, there are multiple cluster being operated, and dependent on the data characteristic, we decide which cluster we use. Especially the data ha uh, that has frequent access, we want to ensure the availability. That's why we have a dual cluster structure. Size-wise, big cluster have 100 nodes inside. And at peak time, 2.5 million query per sec being processed. With regards to the operation, we don't really have a specific HBase dedicated team. Application code developers also operate HBase. It's not that everybody uses HBase, it's just portion of the people use HBase, and it's run by a small team. And we use a lot of HBase, and open source tool also is being used, as you can see. On your right, you see PMC, Imon, HBase, all these are internally developed tools. So we combine tools to reduce our load for our daily operation. With regards to the monitoring, I'd like to give you a little bit of details. HBase is a um, distributed storage. So if something happens, then we immediately need to find out what's happening uh, on the cluster as a whole. And we need to have a good monitoring mechanism. And monitoring environments being improved day by day. But at this point of time, these other system we use. It might be too small for you to follow, but Prometheus is the main tool we use. And each, for each HBase cluster, Prometheus instance uh, is there. Every 10 seconds, uh, it collects metrics. And application server side has no idea which problem is happening at which HBase. So Prometheus um, concentrates all the metrics from all clusters, meaning it has huge data, meaning we have a polling interval, a little, relatively longer polling intervals. And we, sometimes we want to have a longer perspective of the trend, and sometimes we elongate, elongate the interval and see the metrics. 
but usually we create a dashboard to look at the da um, data. And also, HBase, in case of a failure, each daemon is, has a log file, and there are certain important log information inside the local file of daemon. So we have to make sure that we collect those data as well. We use Elasticsearch for that purpose, and FileBeat, Logstash, we collect information, we put it in Elasticsearch, and take a look at the data. And with regards to the HBase version, this shows you the history of HBase versions. Currently, 1.3K. 1.3 is the latest version. That is so-called the stable version. Is 1.26, that's the latest for the stable version. But currently, we are using 0.96 update 5. That's the version we're using. And CDH is there. And um, it's not that we're asking Cloud Vendor to support it. We're just simply using the package. And let me explain a little bit more. As you can see from the history, it's a quite an old version. And um, 0 0.90, as you can see from the number, community already left behind that version. And there are lots of bugs still remaining. But even though we report the bugs, they tell us to upgrade the version. So no one really can take care of those existing bugs. And of course, the latest HBase improvements, enhancements, the latest features are not backported, meaning we cannot use them. And we've been wanting to upgrade the version, and we're now reach reaching the limit. So two years ago, we started a small-scale HBase upgrade project. So let me talk more about the upgrade. Why didn't we upgrade to begin with? Let me explain the reasons first. H in order for us to upgrade HBase, usually it, we go through a rolling upgrade. This means cluster as a whole, it just keeps operating, but each node, one by one, can plug up and upgrade it and plug in. We need to go through one by one, everything is done, that means completion of the upgrade. And if we can do this, then without the service stoppage, we can go through the upgrade. But with regards to rate 0 0.96, HBase client server protocol is being changed. And the community calls the singularity version. So when we go through the versions, rolling upgrade is not available for us. So upgrade itself became an impediment for us. And also, the first major release, 1.0, came out. The client library API also being organized. And application server code first need to be rewritten. Otherwise, we cannot go through the upgrade. Therefore, we struggled a lot. So there's nothing we can do unless we upgrade. So the first thing we did was performance assessment. I'm sure some of you already know. HBase um, 0.9 and 1.0, when you look at the source code, it's completely different. And it's completely even a different software, some people say. And because of that reason, if we go through the upgrade, can we really uh, see in performance as we expected? Uh, that was our concern. So that's why we, first of all, wanted to make sure that we go through a very thorough performance assessment. And when we say performance assessment, um, maybe benchmark would be quite useful. But HBase is have lots of load varieties. So we wanted to make sure that we use the commercial load to go through the testing. So we decided to use shadow traffic to do the performance assessment. And this is what we did. On the left top, you see application server. That's commercial application server. We call it talk server. And we manipulated a little bit so that HBase, from application server, making access to HBase, uh, we can intercept that access. And that's exactly where the contents of the request sent to HBase are being uh, thrown to Kafka. And then 
from Kafka, you can pick up the request contents and then replay the contents so that you can have a similar um, load in post, just like a commercial environment and mechanism itself. You don't really have to manipulate application side much because HBased 0.96 RPC layer uh, can be replaced with older HBase. So as you see from the bottom, you can write XML, and um, you can put the code as you see on top. Then you can overwrite the code method. So the parameter that comes back can be sent to Kafka. Then uh, what I just expressed can be um, implemented. So we imposed a load similar to commercial on shadow cluster, and it looks like this. The vertical line shows the response time, 99 percentile, and the horizontal shows the timeline. And also, there are so many nodes, so it might be difficult for you to follow, but response time shows some spikes. And for the vertical numbers, you see 200 millisec or 300 millisec. So, so the speed is relatively slow, so we were a little bit worried. But when we gave a closer look, some people have a similar experience, and it seems like 112 have some bugs. That's what we found out. And then HBase 120, when we went through the upgrade, those problems easily got solved. So it was quite risky for us if we didn't go through the testing. But uh, with 120, uh, we checked all the index. And with 120, we knew that this was a safe version to upgrade to. So let me give you more specifics with regards to the upgrade. But as, as I said before, rolling upgrade option is not available for us. And we, because we're a message service provider, service being stopped and behind the scene to go through a big upgrade is not an option for us either. So this is the approach we've taken. Let me go through one by one. Step one from existing cluster. We just left behind the existing cluster. And we prepared an empty uh, HBase uh, with a new version so that application, when you write the data from application side, then to the existing cluster and the new cluster, you can do the write for both sides. And we call it dual write. And we keep the dual write status behind the scene. The existing data can be copied from old to new. Once that's done, then the same data exists on the old and new. So application read path can be switched so that new cluster data can be the truth, version of truth. So that's how we can complete the upgrade. And because we have to have two clusters, meaning it's quite costly, but stepwise, it's simple. So it seemed feasible. I'm sure you get the impression that it might be feasible. But when you try to give uh, action, take an action, there are some challenges. Step one, do, when we, I said dual write is done, but it's not that simple to do the dual write to begin with. What we want to do is H base um, 0 0.9 and y 1, 1 1.2 has the dual write, but uh, if we go through 0 0.96, it has different protocol, meaning that one version client library being used to do the dual write is not possible. And also, because of the protocol is being changed, however, class is, is name is exactly the same. So you, you cannot read both versions at the same time, meaning it's a challenge for us. And what can we do? How can we resolve that? One option is shading as a solution. So this means either of library package name can be rewritten and relocate accordingly. Then all version can be read at the same time. So we thought that might be a feasible option. And the shading itself is um, done uh, using a Maven shade plugin. So it seems simple. But when we took an action, it won't work. Because with the old HBase protocol, client and server, you need to exchange class name. And if you include package name, the full class net, uh, name goes through the network. That's how the mechanism works. So if we um, freely put the name on the package, like HS base um, 90, then it gets sent to the server. But the server doesn't know that we wrote the name, meaning that um, the dialogue won't exist, so it won't work. Again, the challenge came. 
So at the end of the day, what we did was that, I'm sure there are other options, but what we did was that we decided to batch the HSH based client, uh, apply patch to H based client. It was quite simple. Um, we just uh, write the class name to the network and we reviewed all the class names and whatever the um, prefix that we um, discretion won't go out of the network. And whatever that comes from the server, we put the prefix for the class name that came from the server side. So it's a quite a cumbersome solution, but somehow we were able to make it work, and then we were able to do dual right. So now finally we're here at step one release. One, there's one thing we, one tweak we did. So on the old cluster, we still wrote on dynamically. And for the first step, we try to write it asynchronously. By asynchronously, I meant that this we're using Tomcat here. So we try not to block the Tomcat thread. And we try to use other thread to keep on writing. By doing so, if there's any issues on the cluster 1.2, it will not affect the service, and we can disconnect uh, these issues. So while we had the safety net, we have released this dual write. Now we have faced another issue. So it was working for a couple of weeks, but after two weeks, at one node, um, a res response time, we saw a spike. Uh, where, it, where it went over one second. And thanks to the safety net that we have implemented, so there was no services. But while we were sewing, seeing some light at the end of the tunnel, now we were facing this issue and we became disappointed. So we had to regroup and start to look into it once again. So we try to look through uh, heap tank and stack trace. And it seems like we're using G1, GC. And with the combination of weak reference, uh, it wasn't working well. I'm going to skip the details, but if you're, interest, if you're interested, you can take a look into this report in uh, 16146. So 16616. So we have sent a patch for this 16616. Uh, and it would look good for us if we can tell them that the patch would solve the problem. So what actually happened was that these, we, by applying these two patches shown in the middle, we were able to resolve the problem. But here, uh, since the actual version does not have this patch, so we're using these patches on our own. So now we can finally do the dual right. And next comes, what next is, the next step is copying the data. Here again, we now have issue, issues on the compatibility. In H base, there's the H file format, but there's no compatibility uh, with, point, uh, with V1. And because 1.2 runs on Hadoop 2. Um, because since HBase runs on uh, has a tool copy table, and due to this, uh, we cannot use it straight away. So we have to go back to the drawing board. So we have created a map reduce job on our own, which is quite similar to copy table. What we did was to by scan. While we were scanning the old data, we were write out to the new master data. So it sounds very simple, but once again, we had to use both version of H uh, HBase, and now we have to have we have to handle both Hadoop one and Hadoop two. So there's a lot of work involved. So we could have used the same approach as shading, but we had to use the Hadoop. So in order to uh, do that, we need to patch on the uh, Hadoop side as well. So this time, 
we use the uh, multiple class loader. So there are a lot of uh, tripping points uh, if you're using multiple ones. But we, we just thought if there's any problems, we'll do things all over again. So after going through all this trouble, we were able to come to the point where we can just copy and upgrade. But before that, we had to perform the test. Well, this is a database, so we can we have to ensure that there is no um, corrupt data. So one of the way to perform the test is we created a job. So here, we will scan from both tables and we constantly compare both tables. So if both tables come out to be the same, then there will be no problem. And we also made a different, uh, used another approach for the testing. Here, when reading from the application server, here we're still using the uh, reading from the old data, but we're also reading from the new data and compare these two results. And if there's no, uh, if there's a mismatch, then we'll uh, keep it in the log. But uh, there'll be some issues where we'll, things will appear on the log, but we'll, we looked into those incidents one by one to ensure that there's no issues once we release it, release the service. Finally, we have decided to uh, release these uh, upgrades. So this is the result of the up, up, uh, upgrade. So some of the upgrades were done for 1.1.12. And there are actually three more H-based uh, clusters that are working in the production. But there's still some that are still under work. And we're very working very hard for it. From here going forward, uh, we have worked so hard on the upgrade, but I want to emphasize, uh, I want to highlight uh, the benefits of upgrade. So obviously there are many benefits to the upgrade. And there are many benefits uh, other than the ones written here. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to highlight some of the uh, major uh, benefits we felt. First is the bucket cache. HBase, when it reads the data, it doesn't read from the disk re directly. Uh, it will store some data in the memory cache. But in, back in 0 0.9, this was kept in the JVM's heap. In that case, when cache eviction happens, uh, the performance, this will affect the performance. But if you use the bucket cache, so this, now this cache can be held in the off-peep area where it doesn't affect the performance. So this graph shows the count of slow log. So by enabling this feature, we were able to reduce the slow, slow log by half. And there's one interesting point on the features. There's a thing called prog prog uh, pluggable replicator. So it wasn't, it didn't exist in 0 0.90, but now the replication can be done. And how this is being carried out is that when data is being written to HBase, inside there's a journal log called HBase HLog, and it's the data is written sequentially. And my SQL, it's called uh, uh, it's it's called a bin. So this will read from the top to bottom, and this is how the repli replication takes place. By using this pluggable replicator, uh, you can add the process that you want to uh, be executed during the replication. The benefit for this is that the data can be switched to non-HBase uh, data storage. By using this feature, we're working on replicating to uh, Kafka as well as HBase. But 
um, so we can actually obtain the data of HLOG from Kafka. What's great about this is that in HBase, there's quite a large volume of data. And through uh, Kafka, we can obtain the data in, on the fly and perform some analysis uh, real time. And also, by saving on the uh, HBase, we can uh, we think that we can also perform incremental backups. So, so to summarize, although we are still not yet complete, but we have upgraded some of the clusters of HBase from 0 0.90 to 1.2. And in that process, because this is an upgrade of the database, there are some risks. And we're able to work out, work around such risk to complete them successfully. To be more specific, we tried using uh, shadow clusters. And for the con checking inconsistency, we use uh, several methods. And we have also employed uh, the safety net to allow the dual write release. As a result, the upgrade was successful. And we are seeing the benefits with the new features and the new version. But in that process, there are some bugs, even the ones that we did not uh, present today. So we we learned that the HBase is not perfect. And I think that is true for any other OSS. But on the other hand, there are some issues and troubles that would only surface uh, with the scale that we're running. So by solving those issues, I believe that we're also contributing to the community. And as a matter of fact, if you're using the old version of HBase, even if you were able to solve the problem, it's very difficult to say that it, you have contributed to such issues. But with the new versions, uh, now we can uh, give those uh, benefits back to the communities. And there's a rumor that HBase 2.0 may come up at the end of the year. So I think this initiative needs to be carried on uh, even after this upgrade is complete. So while we work hard on this aspect, we'd like to contribute to making our platform even better. Thank you for listening to my sessions.